Good afternoon. Today we are headed to Epcot for the very first day of the International Festival of the Holidays. <gasps> yeah, this is your first time going to Epcot for the Festival of the Holidays, bud. Ooh, this is one of our favorite festivals. It is, um, but they are going to be doing things a little bit differently this year. So we won't be seeing any of the storytellers. So one of my absolute favorite parts about the International Festival of the Holidays was that uh, not every country, but some of the countries had uh, different sort of storytellers that would tell the story of the holiday tradition in that country. And it was always such a cool thing to, to see. And the stories were, I don't know, it was just always really neat to see. So I'm sad that we'll be missing that this year. But this year does focus more on the food. So you know that I like that. Well, and we looked at the menus. The food looks so good. A lot of new stuff. Yes. I mean, oh, and there's a cookie stroll too, right? Yeah, there's right? a cookie stroll again this year. Mm. It, was, it was a fantastic thing that we did last year. I don't know if we'll do the cookie stroll today. I think that we'll might be to, its own video. Yeah, we might go back and do that on a different day. Another thing that I'm excited about is we might maybe, and I have bad luck with this, but we might get to see Santa. Oh, is he going to have his own cavalcade? He has his own cavalcade. Oh. Comes through in a horse-drawn carriage. That's cool. Yeah. So we saw Santa at um, Hollywood Studios in his like, is he in a Camaro? He's in a Camaro. Pretty cool. <laughs> Pretty sweet Camaro too. So, so I can't wait to see him at Epcot. Ho hopefully we can catch him. What do you think? You want to see Santa today? Let's do it. Let's go see Santa. All right, <sighs> let's go and eat some food. Oh yeah, we did it. We've made it to Epcot and we are headed in. It's a beautiful day. At least three sky, three skies in the clouds. <laughs> three clouds in the sky. As we're headed in, you can see the garland is already up. They're playing holiday music. Ooh, I'm in the mood. I gotta say, I'm uh, I'm pretty hyped right now. Right? Like I'm I'm really excited for the food, but also we haven't been here since they put up the holiday decorations. Right? So I'm really excited to see like the tree, Ooh. everything. Me too. I just noticed these little Christmas baubles are worlds or globes, like earth shaped. And look, there it is, Festival of the Holidays, presented by Advent Health. I feel like everything is presented by Advent Health now. Yes. Taste of Epcot International Festival of the Holidays presented by Advent Health. Chip and Dale. Dale wearing his Santa hat and Chip over here wearing his scarf and these giant presents. Look at those spires. They look awesome. I don't think I ever got a really good shot of them on the other camera. Now that we're using this one, they are beautiful. Outside of the pin trading headquarters here underneath Spaceship Earth, there was a sign that I thought was so funny. It says, limited edition pin release available at Mouse Gear. But when I first looked at it, I was like, Le Pin, what does that mean? Is it like a French pin? Look out here on the grassy knoll is Joy from Inside Out. And she has a little bit of garland around her neck. Is she picking flowers? Yes, yeah, she's like pretending to pick flowers, I think. Oh, And she's wrapping them up making a bouquet and she has like a little ribbon oh you can see her garland better too she's looking like it's through a telescope oh she saw us hi joy that's fun so over on this lawn is where you can meet joy from inside out and also winnie the pooh comes out here one thing that's new for the holiday season is over here at journey into imagination figment is the main character on this ride he's that little purple dragon right there and in, on a couple of the animatronics, they put little holiday sweaters. And we're not going to show that because we're not doing any inside rides, but it's very cute. So we're almost down here to World Showcase where the Christmas tree is. But if we turn around and face back towards Spaceship Earth, they have a season's greetings photo op here, which would probably be amazing at night because I have a feeling that these lights around Goofy's leg and around Donald's ladder over here light up at night. So this probably makes a fantastic photo op. Is it just me or is this, is the, is the tree leaning a little bit? Also, every year I'm always blown away by how the angel on top is facing. So she's not really facing exactly at Spaceship Earth. Is there something that she's facing at? Like, is there a specific direction that she's facing at? Cause we've been here previous years and she's just like looking the other way. She's kind of like to the side a little bit. Yeah. Maybe there, I don't know. What's Maybe she there? follows the North Star. Maybe she does. Right? I also think it's funny that you think every tree is leaning. I, that's the way that it is. This, is this one not leaning? It looks straight to me. All right. I don't know. You let us know. What's your opinion? Straight I, or leaning? I feel like I'm just, I just have a crooked, crooked head. <laughs> <laughs> so we have made it to World Showcase. And instead of turning left, we're going to go to the right because 
all of the cavalcades go clockwise around World Showcase. So we're headed this way, hoping to see a cavalcade. So we're on the back side of the tree right now, and you can get a good look at some of these ornaments with the way that the sunshine is shining on it. And the way that this tree is decorated is they have something from every country in World Showcase. You can really see how the angel is turned a little bit right here. I know that I said we were gonna turn right when going down World Showcase, but we made a left really quick to head over here to Disney Traders because I wanted to see this. Olaf's Holiday Tradition Expedition 2020. It's the scavenger hunt. You have to go around and find different, like symbols of different holidays. So you got like a dreidel, a yule log, a fruitcake, candy canes. What's this? That's oh, a paper lantern. lantern. Yeah. Oh, cool. Okay. What's the little goat? Um, I think it's an ornament of some kind. Okay. Is it, is it kind of like the Remy's? I think so. Okay. I feel like this is new. I've never seen this before. Yeah. So yeah, and look at this Olaf right here. Is this part of, or is this in relation to the new Olaf short that's on Disney Plus? Oh, we haven't watched it yet. We gotta yeah. watch it. Is this some synergy right here? <laughs> Maybe. Let's go and see if we can see what the prizes are inside. Oh, this is interesting. They say, look for the Mickey snowflake throughout the store for special offers and seasonal savings. And here are the prizes that you can get if you complete the scavenger hunt. Looks like three different Frozen 2 cups. Or maybe it's the, uh, the Olaf short. We still haven't seen it. Let us know in the comments down below if this is from the Frozen short. There's that goat again. They have Spirit Jersey branded masks. Interesting. So we found out that these are $14 and they said that they run about the same size as the Disney branded masks, but they are shaped differently. So I think we're gonna get one so we can see how it looks. So I picked up the Spirit Jersey mask. I got a medium, because they said it runs about the same size as these Disney masks. This one is cotton though, whereas this one is more of like a poly blend. So I, I won't dry this one for sure, but it was $11.07 with our discount and it's about $15 without a discount, which I think is kind of pricey for a mask, but it's it's just really cute. So I had to get it. First booth we come upon is Holiday Sweets and Treats. I don't know if there's anything we're gonna get from this one, but it does have one of the cookies from the cookie stroll and you can tell it's on the cookie stroll because it has a little cookie icon next to it. I love it. Yeah. So we'll check this one out on our cookie stroll trip. Oh yeah. For sure. I think we're going to Hawaii though right now. That's so we're getting on a plane, we're going to Hawaii. <laughs> nice. We had a, I looked at the menu already and they have a salmon dish that I want to try. Ooh, I haven't looked at any menus. You want to be totally surprised? I always want to be surprised. See, I'm the opposite. I want to know what I'm getting into and you don't. So Holiday Sweets and Treats was right here, right across from the Port of Entry store. We were over at Disney Traders, which is the twin store to this one. You can kind of uh -huh. see the Christmas tree just back there, but we're going to Melakaliki Maka Kitchen. Kalua pork. Love it, lomi lomi salmon, and then coconut pudding. Ooh, all right, I think I'm gonna get the Kahlua pork, why not? Sounds good. We've got the Kahlua pork on this like purple potato, and it smells so good. This is the lomi lomi salmon, and then it just has some chips on the back of it back here. It looks really good, it looks very fresh. Oh, Jen just told me that it has yuzu mayonnaise on it. That sounds interesting. So I think you eat this like, like you put this on your little plantain chip. Oh, I thought they were it. potato chips. I think they're plantains, right? Look. Yeah, that looks like a plantain. <laughs> Buddy. Okay, let's see. It's very citrusy. Oh. This is so good. Is it? So. I don't know if you guys remember when uh, it was right before the shutdown, whatever that was that food and wine or flower and garden. Mm -hmm. um, there was this really delicious tuna dish. Do you remember that? It was at the citrus blossom. I'll put the link to that video in the, in the description down below, but this tastes very similar to that. This is really good. Interesting. It's like super, super citrusy. And then that mayonnaise. Wow. It has like a teensy weensy bit of like a sweet flavor. This is delicious. Nice. I love, I love raw fish though. So if you don't like raw fish, you're not going to like this. But if you do like raw fish, I would highly recommend trying it. Excellent. Also, the friendship pulling in right behind us. All right, let's try this Kahlua pork. Looks like it might be pretty good. Let's see. Oh, it's shredded pork, but it's not very like pulled apart shredded. That's a really good flavor. It's the exact same pork that they have on the pork sliders. 
except for this pork, it's just a little bit drier. Let's try it with some of the purple potato too. That's good. There's a purple sweet potato. Mmm. Wow. Yeah, this is good. I do want it to be a little bit wetter, but it still has a really good flavor to it. Yeah, I would order this again. It's like a different version of the Kahlua pork slider. Very delicious. Buddy, you want to try some potatoes? A nice purple potato? You're trying purple potatoes, buddy. What do you think? A little bit of pork on there. Is that yummy? I think he likes it. I think so too. We gave him some of the Kahlua pork from the slider during uh, food, food and wine, and he liked it. Oh, he so. loved the Kahlua pork. So I'm assuming Ooh. he would like this too. Ooh. Is this too big of a bite, buddy? Oh, it went on his shirt. So kind of right across the walkway from Melikaliki Maka Holiday Kitchen is the Citrus Blossom. And this has been the same name for this booth for the past three festivals. So for Flower and Garden, for Food and Wine, and now for Festival of the Holidays. Let's see here, an orange cream shake. Well, so there's no food here, it's just drinks. Okay, heading a little further into World Showcase, it's pretty busy today. Today is the first day of the festival, so that does make some sense, but a lot busier than I thought it was gonna be. Over here at Canada, there's a big long line. Everybody's trying to get the seared scallops, the beef, what is that, Bergeron? I'm not, I'm not even gonna try to pronounce it. Or the <laughs> maple yule log. The picture of the maple yule log, it looked really nice. Oh, oh and they have one of the cookies too, the peppermint pinwheel cookie. I think the, the line's a little bit too long for us. It actually wraps back behind the booth over there, so. It is. We're off to the next booth. But it is always one of the most popular booths at every festival. Yeah. Have you noticed that? Yeah. I wonder why. I think it's because it's one of the first that you see, maybe? Maybe, yeah. Uh, and they always have like a steak or some kind of beef. Right? There are shows that happen during the holidays. So we gotta find a dot. So these are the same performers as the Jammeters here at Epcot. But they are chefs. All right, I think we're gonna poke inside of World Showplace because they've got quite a few offerings here. Oh, and we can see Joyful in here too. Interesting, let's go inside and see what the offerings are. Here we go, we're headed into World Showplace. All kinds of holiday decorations out and about. And there's a giant marshmallow display out here. You know what would be really funny is if this marshmallow was made of marshmallows. And look, there's Olaf. So on the way in, I said, oh, we'll get to hear Joyful in here. That's who this is, is Joyful. A couple of really fun photo ops in here. Look, oh, there's Chip and Dale too. Look at them. That's super fun. You look like you're up in the snow covered trees. I don't know what to say. I don't, what do you, what do, you, what do people up north say? First booth here is the festival favorites. Got some black and bass, duck confit, and a gingerbread cookie. You're gonna get that black and bass, aren't you? So I think we'll get it on the way out though, because I want to look at everything first. Oh, here's a big description of it. The black and bass with white cheddar grits and okra with tomato and onion stew. So the Prost booth is more focused on beer. They do have a charcuterie, but the rest of it is all beer. Oh, and there's a sign language interpreter over here too. Next booth is Holiday Hearth. Got a red velvet mini bun cake, salted caramel spaceship earth cookie. Oh, lots of cookies. Oh my goodness. This one sounds amazing. Outside there's a photo op for Freeform 25 Days of Christmas. But me and the buddy had to come outside because it was just a little bit too loud in there, right buddy? It was super fun though. Did you like the music? What'd you think? It was a little loud, right? All right, mommy's back and she got the blackened sea bass. There's some cheesy grits, some like tomato okra stew, and then some fried okra. Looks and really good. We ran into Rachel from Diz Life Hours, and she said, she said, I know you like fish, you have to try this. It was really good, but it was kind of spicy. So I'm trying this on her recommendation, but I have to say I probably would have tried this anyway because it just sounds really good. Yeah. I'm excited to see um, how it tastes. Oh, so you didn't actually need to get a knife. No, yeah, this, this is pretty like flaky fish, so. It is spicy. 
Yeah? Mm -hmm. Good spicy though? Good like black and spicy so it's like a like a back of the throat kind of a spice. Oh okay. Oh. Buddy. I do like that we can still hear joyful out here. You can hear them. For, I have to say like they are way too loud. Yeah. Like they sound really good but they are overly like they're way too loud. I think that they are set up for when they were on the stage like the by outside stage. Yeah, the outside stage. It was like you couldn't hear yourself thinking there. It was so yeah. loud. And they were kind of blown out sounding like whoever's oh. doing their sound I think they just have them up too high. Yeah. But they do they do sound good. And they're singing really awesome music. Yeah. But um so about this, the fish is pretty spicy. It does like the back of your throat definitely feels it. And I think the grits really cut the spice nicely. So How's the how's the stew in the fried okra? So good. Yeah. So good, yeah. I love okra. I think the um the like tomato kind of stew that they do when they do like like fish and grits or like shrimp and grits, the kind of like tomatoey stew is pretty standard for these kind of dishes. So it just it tastes very like familiar. Um, it's good. You know what I like is that it does have so much spice. Disney's usually kind of afraid to add spice to things for these festivals. Yeah. I like that they like, I like that they went for it this year, you know? Sorry, there's a bee that landed on my leg and it's tickling me so a hard. Bee? A bee? I don't know where it went. But, oh, here it is right here. He's flying around. That's him. I have a bee friend. Yeah, it's a bee friend. This is great. I would totally recommend getting this if you like fish and if you like spice. Ooh, so this is the holiday bunt cake. Yeah, it looks good. Gonna land on my spoon? Oh no, here's our bee friend. He loves you. Oh no. Is it a bee? I don't think that's a that's bee. It's a bee. That looks like a wasp. No, it's a bee. So what were the flavors of this? It was I think a red it was velvet. Just red velvet with a cream cheese icing. Oh, okay. So just like a standard holiday cake. Yeah, I think so. But it's a mini. Ah, does it have the icing inside? It does. That looks really good. It, it tastes very good. Yeah? Yeah, the icing is delicious. It's a uh, cream cheese icing. Is the cake moist or dry? It's moist. Is it? Okay. And the thing is, it's two different kinds of icing. You see how there's like this regular white icing and then there's a the cream cheese icing up here? Oh yeah, it's like a glaze almost, it looks like. Yeah, and the old little snowflakes are crunchy in there. Mm. Add a nice little like other texture to it. It was delicious. Would you get it again? Yeah. Nice. Why not? <laughs> Why not? Cake. Yeah. I think I would get mine again too. I didn't finish mine yet, but I think I would totally order that again. Why not? Fish. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Jackson, show me your hands because you got red velvet cake all over yourself. See, I tried some red velvet cake. Tried some cake. red velvet cake and oh now no. you got it all over your hands. Buddy, let me see. Oh no. Oh no, now I have it on mine. Uh oh. Oh geez, okay. Too many Very red velvets. Impressive. So here's the Olaf on the way into World Showplace, or on the way out of World Showplace, we found the Olaf, and he is next to a Kinara, which is part of the Kwanzaa celebration, which makes sense because Joyful were actually the storytellers for Kwanzaa when they had storytellers. Came back behind the UK pavilion, and there's Alice out here, meeting with guests. I don't know what this is, but back behind the UK pavilion, they have a little bar here with their serving, looks like, Liquor drinks with tea. Jackson's going to see Alice. Hey, oh, that's the <laughs> Hi, Hi, hello. Are you sitting talk to the class with Alice? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can talk to the class all day if I do. Oh, she said she's going to talk to the flowers all day. Oh. Yeah. Over here at the UK, they have a giant tea kettle decorated for the holidays. Pouring some tea into these little tea cups. This is one of my favorite Epcot holiday decorations. I love this. I think it's so cute. Here in the France booth, we got a, a salmon spread on house-made bread. There's this turkey with bacon. Ooh, that sounds good. And then a Yule log. The Yule log looks kind of good. Oh, but it's caramel. Okay. We have already looked at the menus, and I think we have two dishes in mind. Oh, yeah. Because I think we only have enough time to do two more things. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't so. want to overdo it today because I would like to come back and try more things. Yeah. New things next time. So I'm doing all fish, and you're doing, like, traditional stuff. Yeah. So you have the most traditional dish next. Right. And then I have a sushi Christmas tree. Right. Pretty cool. Another thing is, well, I was going to say, it's, it looks like it's getting busier, but this shot does not, like... <laughs> notate that but because it's dinner time i feel like more people are showing up to eat their sort of like holiday eating around the world dinner time meal the day after thanksgiving it is nice to look at the other booths though to see what you'll get the next time potato latkes sounds really good and this black and white cookie is very good 
Also, the pastrami on rye sounds still, I mean, it sounds very like, you know, like a normal thing you could get anywhere, but I want to try it. So as you're walking around Epcot, be sure to listen to the music around. So right now we're hearing like a new song that we've never heard before. It's brand new for this year. It's Mickey's Happy Holidays. Happy Holidays. Yeah. So we're going to see Mickey's Cavalcade and they're all wearing special outfits for the holiday. We're right next to Sapphire Holiday Kitchen and they are going to turn and go off stage right here. So we've got a front row view to see Mickey and friends coming through. They're in their holiday outfits. Did you see your friend Mickey? Was that your friend Mickey? I don't know why, but I feel like I'm gonna cry. Oh no. <laughs> no. Did he like it? He loved it. Oh, I couldn't see Jackson's face. He literally was like, oh, oh, like. <laughs> oh, you know who Mickey is. I love that he loves Mickey and Minnie. Stop by Sapphire Holiday Kitchen, which is near Morocco. To have a look at the menu here. Oh, well, they have some photos of stuff. Grilled lamb kefka looks really good. The uh, the chicken drum looks pretty nice. And what's this? It's a warm beignet with Ooh. cream, cinnamon, sugar, and chocolate sauce. That sounds wonderful. That sounds amazing. That's on my list for next time. <laughs> they also have these holiday markets around where you can buy the holiday merchandise. Also, inside of World Showplace, they had a big holiday market where you can get all of the merchandise, but it was just too loud for us to be yeah, in there for very long. It was, well, we try not to stay inside for more than like 10 minutes at a time, and yeah. I could have spent all day looking at the merchant there. So oh, yeah. it would have been dangerous for me. All right, this is where we're at right now. We're at the Japan Pavilion, and this is the Shiwashu booth. All of it sounds really good, but this is what Jen's gonna get, the sushi tree. And what are you gonna get? Oh, I'm gonna get this Ichigo Mont Blanc tart. It looks really good. Right? I didn't plan on getting it, but I'm getting it now because I saw the picture of it and it looks awesome. So they have two different menus. They have the menu that doesn't have the pictures and then they have the menu that does have the pictures. Right. And sometimes you get to the one with the pictures and something just calls you, just draws you in. Right, like this one's like, Tim! <laughs> so here is the sushi tree. It looks pretty good. I gotta say though, my immediate reaction is there's not very much fish on this. Yeah. Um, there's also some, some salmon roe on it, with, but there's not very much of that either. So I don't know. I don't know if it's worth the price but it is very cute. So, I don't know, give and take, I guess. And this is my strawberry tart. It doesn't look as good as it did on the picture that was there, but I have a feeling it'll still be delicious. You gonna try it, buddy? I gave him a little bit of the rice. I didn't give him any of the fish, but this has the spicy kind of mayonnaise sauce and then also a wasabi cream sauce on oh, the Oh, not outside. on the like rice or fish, it's just on the side. Yeah, it's just like a little decoration on the side. So you can have that little bit of spice. <laughs> So, I think this is one of the ones that's like Instagram worthy, but it's not very flavorful. Um, it's very cute though. I honestly don't think I would get this one again. No? <laughs> it's fun to take a picture of it though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, of all the things that we've had, I think the first thing that I had was so the, the one at um, Hawaii. Yeah. That was so delicious and so flavorful. I would actually like, I want to get another one. Oh, okay. It was so good. I think I like the bunt cake for, for me so far. You guys want to see my multitasking while I'm filming Jen and keeping Jackson excited? Are you going to do with Dada? Dad? That daddy's That so whole funny. time that I was filming, I was doing this with him. Oh, no. Playing footsie with him. We're going to try this strawberry tart. I can't really show it to you because it's just sliding around the, sliding around the plate. I don't know how, do you like try some of the topping first? Oh, it's got like a whole strawberry inside of there. Like, see if I can tilt that up. Oh, that's good. It's like a very light, fluffy, strawberry cream type stuff on the top. And then there's like a custard, a nice stringy custard underneath. <laughs> oh yeah, lots of strawberry flavor. I think you would really like this. So ever since our wedding, we've been in search for the perfect strawberry shortcake. We haven't found it yet, but this one's really good. Especially for being just like at a booth in Epcot. There's the whole strawberry. So that was a really good fresh strawberry. Also, they put some sort of like sugary rock type things all over it. 
like a sprinkle. It's good. I like it because it adds like a nice crunch to it. it. Makes it a little bit more Instagram worthy, but because they did like this almost like spaghetti <laughs> style of topping rather than like a, a piped on like, whoop, whoop, you know, what? I don't know how to explain that. Like, like a cupcake top is piped on and it has like those ridges around the outside. Looks better than like the spaghetti style. I think that if they had just like piped it on rather than done the spaghetti style, it would have been more Instagram worthy. Still, it's very good. I would order this again. Here at the Funnel Cakes booth, they have a special funnel cake for Festival of the Holidays. It's a sweet potato casserole funnel cake. And I think it's this one right here. It does, and you can hear the wonderful tones of Mariachi Cobre behind us. Also, Voices of Liberty perform on this stage. It's the first time Voices has been back since the reopening. They'll come again at 510, so if we wait 10 minutes, we'll see them. It does seem like they're anticipating a lot of people eating at the America booth because this is a big, long line. Look at this. There's another big Christmas tree at near the America booth. And look, they got pineapples on it. Yeah, what's the, pi what's the deal with the pineapples? Uh, Hawaii. Oh, okay. is that what it is? Sure. Okay. I don't know. But there's nothing really else. There's pineapples and pears and grapes and stuff like that. But then there's no other, there's like gigantic pine cones. I love this thing that's on fire. What is that? That's a lantern. Oh, I love the way that looks. Yeah, it looks really neat, doesn't it? Here's a look at all of the cookies for the cookie stroll. Yes. I'm excited. We're not doing it this time, but we're going to do it one day. So this is the turkey dinner in the very first year of Festival of the Holidays. It was massive. You say this in every single I know, Festival of the Holidays video, but the first year, it was the size of a regular dinner plate. Right? Like it was an actual turkey dinner. And it wasn't too bad. It was only like 14 bucks or something like yeah, that for it. And now you get a much smaller portion, but it is only 575. So. I, honestly, just looking at this turkey, it looks really dry. Oh, really? Yeah, so hopefully it's not as dry as it looks. Okay. But I like the idea of this little stuffing cake. Yeah. That's very smart. And then I got the crinkle cookie, too. And this is part of the cookie stroll, and they stamped our book, but when we come back to do the cookie stroll, we'll get another one. Are you going to do another one? Yeah. Okay. Just to do all of the cookies in one day. You want to be, like, legit doing it the right way. Yeah, I really stroll. Right but... Yeah. And I really ate cookies. <laughs> right. I think my favorite part about this entire thing is the three green beans. Three green three beans. Three green beans. There's about three. It's there very on brand. About three of them. Oh, and Voices of Liberty are coming out right now, so we'll get Everyone, to. Please welcome the Voices of Liberty. Oh, you can look at them. Happy Happy Noel. Happy Kwanzaa. Happy Solstice. And Happy Holidays. Not as dry as I thought it was going to be. No? No. So. How's the gravy? Good. Yeah? Yeah, I'm going to try some of this stuffing cake. Yeah, I like everything about this entire dish. It's good. Can't say anything bad about it. Can't say anything bad. You won't get me to say anything bad about this dish. <laughs> the quietest clap. You like, look at those, those harmonies are hitting his soul. <laughs> This was like what MTV was like in the 90s. Are you having a moment with your cookie? Well, there's so much powdered sugar. <laughs> oh, that's good. Is it just a chocolate cookie? Yeah, it's okay. a crinkle cookie though, so it's like fudgy. Fudgy, okay. And it has a uh, powdered sugar and granulated sugar on the top. Oh, wow. That sounds be up all night. <laughs> Party time. It's good. It's real good. Can I try a bite of oh, this one? Powdered sugar on the bottom. Oh, wow, yeah. Yeah, it just tastes like a super fudgy brownie. Okay. It's good. Here's another one that we'll definitely be hitting up the next time that we come. 
Tasty's fondue. Or that pork schnitzel. Just past the Bavaria booth, we're headed into an area where there's kind of a lot of market booths here. So this is kind of like a little holiday market right here. Some precious woman stalls over here. There's like holiday merch. They had some Santa's helpers merch. Uh, this one is like little. What is this? Oh, it's like a name, like oh, the picture names. They like draw your name, but with pictures. Okay. Yeah. So kind of cool, like souvenir -y type stuff you could get people for holiday presents, maybe. Yeah. And then over here, they always have a woodworker here making handmade things out of wood. Like right now, he's making a staff. It looks like. Like a walking staff. Just coming up here to Norway and the line for Frozen Ever After actually goes all the way into the China Pavilion over there. I'm gonna check and see what the wait time is on the sign. See if I can see it. 95 minutes. Wow. That's a long wait for Frozen Ever After. And they've started installing plexiglass on the boats in between rows so they can load more rows. Yeah, I feel like it's starting to get more and more busy as it starts to get a little bit later in the, the evening. And this is the line just to get into the Mexico Pavilion. That's not including any lines that you would get in inside of the Mexico Pavilion, like for the ride or for the restaurant or for the tequila area. Ooh, as we're walking up, the tree is all lit now because the sun's starting to go down. Yeah, look at how pretty it is. I like it. It's definitely crooked. <laughs> I like it. I can I can totally be like, that tree is definitely crooked. All right, so it is starting to get late, and it's definitely getting more and more crowded. So I think we're gonna head out. Yeah, this is our cue to leave. Yep, time to go home. <laughs> Look at that. We were definitely correct. The lights around Goofy's legs have lit up. It's kind of hard to tell on the camera, but they are definitely lit up. So that was on the season's greeting sign. Actually, I kind of like this shot right here where you can see Spaceship Earth behind it and everything. Epcot bunny hanging out in the grass. Well, we were thinking about stopping into Mouse Gear before we left, but the line to get in is all the way over here. So I think we're going to wait until our next trip. I think we'll definitely come back next time. So there you have it. That was our trip out to Epcot for International Festival of the Holidays. It was great. I am sad that we didn't get to see the storytellers this year, but I will say the food made up for it. Food was fantastic. It was delicious. My favorite thing was the salmon at Hawaii. I think my favorite thing was the turkey and the cookie in America. That crinkle cookie was so good. Delicious. I didn't know how good it was. I've been missing out like all these years. Right? So. And we got to come back and get another one because we're doing the cookie stroll. Maybe next time. There's <laughs> one other time before the end of the, the run. Yeah, but the International Festival of the Holidays is the shortest festival of all of Epcot's festivals. It ends on December 30th. So if you want to come check it out, be sure to come before December 30th. Right. It's I know. A, it's we'll, only about a month long. Yeah, I know we'll be back for sure. Yeah. So all in all, a fantastic day. And with that being said, we are off. We'll see you all tomorrow. And now it's time to help. So today's organization that we'd like to shine a spotlight on is called Support the Soup Man. And their mission is to relieve the pain and suffering of the homeless experience by offering victims of homelessness dignity and hope. Their creed is to care, clean, clothe, and connect and feed the needs of our homeless. Their aim is to bring awareness to the plight of the homeless, to communities, and to their leaders nationwide. When the misfortunes of the homeless are understood, positive and substantial change can be initiated. So the way that they are helping the homeless communities across the nation is they're going from city to city to provide homeless with a shower, a meal, a backpack full of essential toiletries, and some clean clothes. Their goal is to favorably impact the lives of the vulnerable population and restore their dignity and give them hope. So currently they have a number of buses that travel across the country, just feeding, clothing, um, and just helping people. And that's kind of like their main motto on the website was just people helping people, which I think is just a really great message. And I think that um, it's definitely, especially during the holiday season, this is a time where we need to make sure that everybody feels like somebody cares and like somebody is there for them and like they have a place where they can get the things that they need, um, clothes, food, you know, a hot shower. So I was reading some stats on their website and they have served over 20,000 meals. They have been able to give over 3,000 hot showers, um, 16,000 boots and sneakers have been given and 33,000 people have been helped. And there are ways that you can help. You can donate if you like, that'll be in the link in the description down below. You can also donate your time. So just by looking at the website and finding out where they're going to be, if they're gonna be in your area and there's something that, that you could maybe donate your time to help, um, that would be awesome. So I hope you'll take some time to look at the link in the description down below to learn more about the Support the Superman organization um, and help out if you can. But thank you so much for watching this video.